Finally here in the movie trivia face off. We've got Keith the Renegade talking about how he's never heard of me. Well, there's a reason he's never heard of me. That's because this is my first time. But trust me, once we're done here, you'll know exactly who I am. I'm back! Movie trivia face-off is the loud mouth you love to hate, Renegade Keith Kennedy. You're over there, you're in New Zealand, you're in the future, so you already know what happened. Didn't work out well, did it? Coming from the supreme Oscar-winning geek heaven that's better than the rest, and you know it. In New Zealand, it's great. You had six great geek movies made there: three Lord of the Rings, three Hobbits. But here in London, had the Harry Potter's. You even had Avengers movies filmed here. Avengers: Age of Ultron filmed in North London. I've got more. Okay, well, I've never heard of them, so let's just make sure he stays in the pub, does all, and then goes home. That's it. It's going to be better. Good luck. You'll need it. All right, Mimi Trivia Face Off fans, welcome back to the Geek Tacular Division. I am your commissioner, Commissioner Snorlax, or DJ Snacks, as I am more commonly known, although Snorlax is becoming more well known nowadays. Thank you very much for that, Ruben Cologne. I owe you a kick in the ass. Remind me the next time I see you. We're here for a Geektacular match today. First time competitors, we got Joe the Hot Fuzz Farrelly versus the Renegade Keith Kennedy. England versus New Zealand. The Queen's Own versus the Convicts. Let's see how this one turns out today. Joining me on the desk, oh, a new face to the desk, but he's already been in a few matches. You know him as the Warhawk. He is Thomas Scully. What's happening, my friend? Uh, life is good right now, Snacks. You know, uh, fresh off, fresh off my first win over. Uh, Ruben Cologne, whose name I completely forgotten until you so lovingly uh, brought him up, handed him the ass kicking he deserved. But now it's time for me to step back and uh, watch two new great competitors go at it. We have two completely unknown quantities in Hot Fuzz and Renegade. Uh, and I'm just excited to get started, excited to see what these two uh, can show today. Yeah, speaking of that match between you and uh, the fake Kingslayer, he is no longer the Kingslayer because uh, he lost the right to have that name by losing to you. Indeed, and he did. Truly the Geek Tackler Commissioner decided upon a new name for him. He will be known henceforth as the Sandwich Slayer. <laughs> what a good name, the Sandwich Slayer. Ruben Cologne, he'll be using that here in the future. Well, speaking of the future, how about we get into these introductions? Introducing first. What is love? We're representing the fine city of London, England. He is the Queen's own. He is simply known as the Hot Fuzz. Give me Joe Fairly. No more. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Unmute yourself. Good evening. There he is. Good to see you, bud. Thanks for coming in. First geek match. You ready for it? Oh, yeah. All right. His opponent today, he is representing what he likes to call is the greatest film capital of the world for geek movies. I mean, they've got a few coming out of there. Plus, they've got Taika, so i got to give him that. He is from New Zealand. New Zealand. <laughs> he likes to stay away from polar bears because he likes to live. He is known as the Renegade. He is Keith Kennedy. Snacks, I'll give you this one. I'm not going to hate you this round. You've been good to me. You agree that our country is the greatest. You're lucky. I oh, nearly no. trashed you when I, I was talking about no, it. Nearly. Fair. I didn't agree to it. It's just like when I talk about the elf. You did. Be quiet. Self you agree. Shut your Self mouth. Self proclaim. <laughs> All right. Thomas, are you ready? Oh, I'm ready, Snacks. Renegade, are you ready? Always. Hot fuzz, not hot fudge. Are you ready? Let's do this. Then let's get ready to face them. All right, round one. The rules are going to be kind of like this. 
Each competitor will receive a total of 10 questions from random categories. You will have 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on your whiteboard, pizza box, envelope, napkin, paper towel, toilet paper, sheet of paper, whatever it is you're using to write down your answers on. You when asked, you will show that answer to the camera and verbalize your answer as well. Each point is each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. If you do score a perfect round, it will trigger a bonus question. You won't have to write that down. You'll just have to verbalize it. Each of you has three repeats and one challenge that will carry on through the entire match. Do you understand the rules? Oh, yeah. Yep. All right, then let's get this show round started. Your first question comes from the category of Middle Earth. Little people taking long walks. The question is, in the Fellowship of the Ring, what size drink did Mary have that Pippin also wanted? Five, four, three, two, one. Heads down. We'll start with the hot fuzz. This, my friend, is a pint. And a renegade. Didn't have it. It comes in bites. I want one. <laughs> I'm getting one. Wow. All right, Mr. Scully, over to All your right. question two. All right, guys, your second question is in the category of mixed bag. And again, uh, to uh, that one early. Who plays paranoid conspiracy theorist Marvin Boggs in 2010's Red? That was a fun movie to watch. Uh, I've only seen bits and pieces of it myself. But it seems like this. It's, it's it's pretty darn good. Five, four, three, two, one. That's that. We'll go to Renegade. Is it John Malkovich? And Hot Fuzz. I also said Malkovich. All right, one point each. One point each. <laughs> Your next question comes from the category of movie release dates. Movie release dates. Deadpool hit the cinemas in what year? Notice we said cinema because people outside of the United States don't call it a movie theater. Gotta respect the uh, international audience for snacks. Four, three, absolutely. Two, one, pens down. We'll start with Joe. 2016. And Keith. 2016. That is correct. One point each. Three two lead right now. All right, guys. Question number four comes to you from the category of Star Trek, the one with all the Wookiees. <laughs> what is the avian name given to Klingon ships in various Star Trek films? Star Trek is uh, one of my strengths. So it's not a strength for a whole lot of people. A lot of people have issues with this, including. Five, four, I repeat the question three. That is your first repeat. All right. So, what is the avian name given to Klingon ships in various Star Trek films? I thought you said alien name. Oh, avian, like. Avian, as in a, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it a second, I got it a second time. <laughs> Five, Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll start with the Renegade. <laughs> Is that a warbird? We'll go to the hot fuzz. Bird of prey. Bird of prey is correct. Romulans use warbirds. Romulan warbird. That's right. Thank uh, you. Uh, four for four, four, four. <laughs> I was like, is it? All right. The hot fuzz showing some knowledge in Star Trek might have to look into having him into that Iron Man Star Trek match we're planning in the future. You never know. Your next category is Star Wars, the one that actually does have all the Wookiees in it. <laughs> Not the Klingons? No, there's no Klingons in Star Wars, but thank you for playing. Your next question <laughs> is, what did Jar Jar owe Qui-Gon Jinn after being rescued by him during the Trade Federation invasion of Naboo? I'll tell you what George Lucas told me after I saw that film for the first time. A childhood? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hater, five, four, three, two, one. Pins down. We'll start with Joe. Joe. Oh, Joe. Life, yeah. And Renegade. 
Yeah, life bond, life debt, same thing. I think I can let that yeah, one slide. Life bond, life yeah, debt. Roughly the same. We'll give you a point each on that. Five, four, and I'm going to do what the, what the Spaniard normally does. Halfway to a perfect round for the hot fuzz. All right, guys, question number six. Get into the back half of this first round in the category of DC. Who played Superman in the theatrically in the theatrically released Superman and the Mole Men? <sighs> That's a deer in the oh, headlights. Um, right um, um, five, four, repeat. Three. Here we go. All right, DC. Who played Superman in the theatrically released Superman and the Mole Men? That is a deep cut if you haven't seen all the DC movies. I'm not sure this should be a round one question, to be honest with you, five. This is a round three, three pointer. Three, two, one, pens down. You might be right. We'll start with Renegade. Was it Christopher Reeves? And Joe. Nick Cage? Uh, it's incorrect. We were looking for George Reeves. Oh, flip. Had to go further back in time. The commissioner's I knew it was a race. Nine that, was, oh. that, that film was released in like 1944 or something ridiculous like that. You have to mention the perfect round, didn't you? The commissioner's jinx works. Yeah, Your next question that. comes from the category of the DCEU or whatever the f they're calling that thing nowadays. It's called dead. Who composed <laughs> the score for 2017's Wonder Woman? And yeah, I think you're right on that. Just just the mention of that score gives me chills. I mean that uh that that scene alone. Five. Um, four, when she first appears, three, it's phenomenal. Two makes me nauseous. One. Pins down. No, we'll start with Joe. I uh, got Memphis Zimmer. And Kennedy. Nothing. I didn't have enough time, but it was going to be Michael Giacchino. <laughs> uh, we're looking for Rupert Gregson Williams. Uh, okay. We did do the uh, original theme. Yeah. All right. Me, Hans Zimmer so... is my go to as well for musical questions. All right. Question number eight in this category is Wizarding World or Harry Potter, whichever you want to call it. What position do Fred and George Weasley play on the Gryffindor Quidditch team? Fun so fact, cool. I actually played Quidditch in college. Me too. Hey, I played for New Zealand. I only thought Ooh. I was a geek. Five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. We'll start with the Renegade. Are uh, they beaters? And Joe. Beaters. One point each, looking like a 6-4, six, 6-4 four, six, four score at this time. Your next to last question comes from the category of Marvel movies. These are outside the MCU. Who played Laura slash X-23 in Logan? <sighs> wow, man. They went really deep on these questions for this round, didn't they? Five, four, three, two, one. Heads down. We'll start with the hot fuzz. Daphne King. And Keith. No. Didn't have it. All right. Seven to four. Going to this last question for you. Yeah, I've got to thank Roka going on and on and on about it for that one. Okay. So your final question in this category is MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Homecoming, what Washington, D.C. landmark did Spider-Man save his classmates from a falling elevator? This is an excellent movie. Better, better than the, seek, the, the second of its lot. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens that. We'll start with, excuse me, the Renegade. Uh, the Washington Monument. And Joe. Washington Monument. Washington Monument is correct. Looking like an eight to five 
final for this first round. Not bad. Eight points, nothing to be ashamed of. Five. Uh, not bad. Just a few stumbles in there. Maybe he'll get the. Maybe he'll get some better luck in the second round with his questions. I do have to say, a few of those are pretty damn deep. What do you think? Uh, two two solid rounds by uh, both competitors. Short, sweet, to the point. That's the way we like it here on the desk at Movie Trivia Face Off. Let's go to round two. Each competitor is going to spin the wheel. Uh, if you don't like what it lands on, you can choose to spin again. But be careful because once that second spin lands, you have to stick with that category. Now, that's unless the wheel lands on opponent's choice, in which case your opponent will choose your category for you. Both of you will get five questions from that chosen category. Each question is worth two points. However, if you don't know it right away, you can choose multiple choice and the value of the point drops down to one. Now, your opponent may steal if you give an incorrect answer. Now, that's whether it's a one point answer or a two point answer. Your repeats and challenges are still in effect. So snacks, if you're ready to go, I'm ready to go too. All right. Joe, you are in the lead. Yeah. Eight, two, five. Would you like to spin or defer? Spin fast. All right. Categories on the wheel today are Star Wars, Middle Earth, Indiana Jones, Marvel Movies, the DCEU, Star Trek, Movie Quotes, The Wizarding World, the MCU, and DC Movies, as well as Spinners and Opponents Choice. Here's your first spin. My grenade up on Indy, Indiana Jones. Uh, spin again. All right, spinning away from Indy, your second spin. Hope it Ooh, pays off. Dr. Jones. Oh, middle Earth, Ooh. Middle Earth. All right. And Thomas, if you would, you can go ahead and murder those questions. Okay, so. All right, Hot Fuzz, Middle Earth. Question number one. What creature does Gandalf send to get help while on top of Orthanc? A moth. That, that is correct for two points. Question number two in Middle Earth. Who imprisons Gandalf at the top of a tower? <laughs> Saruman. That is correct for two points. It's on a wolf so far. Question number three. Who makes a cameo in Brie snacking on a carrot in The Fellowship of the Ring? Peter Jackson. Correct for another two points. Your penultimate question in Middle Earth. What did only Legolas receive from Galadriel? Five. Multiple four. choice. All right, multiple choice options are A, a pair of daggers, B, hair clips, C, a new longbow, or D, magical arrows. New longbow. That is correct for one point. That's what I thought. I couldn't be sure. And your final question in Middle Earth. What does Gollum say burns precious in the two towers? Multiple choice. I can give you that. Is it A, Mount Doom, B, the Dead Marshes, C, the Urukai, or D, Elven Rope? Elven Rope. Correct for another point. Flying through that round was hot fuzz. I'm eight really points happy scored. All Lord of the Rings and not Hobbit. <laughs> eight <laughs> points scored in that two uses of the multiple choice. No steal opportunities whatsoever for the Renegade. Looks like we're going to go back to the wheel. All right. Let me know when you're ready to spin Renegade Keith Kennedy. Uh, head up. Here we go. Your first spin. Like you're going to land on Marvel movies. Spin again. Moving, spinning away from Marvel movies. I have Wheel of Gloom and Doom. Is he going to be your friend today? Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones. I will. 
I will be administering these questions. As soon as I get that document pulled right back up. Looking at Indiana Jones. All right, your first question in round two. Who plays young Indiana Jones at the beginning of Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade? You don't have to write your answer down, just verbalize. Uh, Phoenix Rivers. Or well, River Phoenix, sorry, back way. Final answer? Yeah. River Phoenix is correct. Yeah, he's back your next question. Question. I know, I'm just, I'm looking at that, the, like, IMDB, where it's got the names backwards, and I was just like, oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't mean right now, he means during his studying. Yeah. I guess. Matrix started that one. <laughs> All right, your next question. In what country does Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom start Multiple choice. All right, I can do that for you. Your options are A, China, B, Japan, C, Thailand, or D, Vietnam. Can I just get a repeat on those multiples, please? Absolutely. A, China, B, Japan, C, Thailand, or D, Vietnam. China. That's correct for one point. Your next question. How many Indiana Jones movies did Sala appear in? The character Sala. One. That's incorrect. Joe, would you like to try to steal? Big two. Two is correct for Ray a massive two point steal. steal. Big steal. Oh, last crusade. Yeah. A two-point steal right there. Your fourth question, Renegade. What year was the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull released? Two thousand eight. That is correct for another two great, points. Great pull by the Renegade there. I looked that out about ten minutes before we started. Oh. And your last question in round two is. Who takes the idol from Indy after he escapes the boulder in Raiders of the Lost Ark? Oh, I hate this guy's name. Um, oh, I can see the scene. Um, multiple choice. I have to. I can't remember. You. Your options are A, Arnold Tolt, B, Colonel Dietrich, C, Bedlock, or D, Walter Donovan. Can you just repeat that again? I had a bit of... Certainly. A, Arnold Tolt. B, Colonel Dietrich. C, Belloc. Or D, Walter Donovan. A. Incorrect. Joe, would you like to try to steal? Belloc. They call him Belloc. Belloc is correct. For a Was one it Belloc? point steal, it is Belloc. Okay. Some great steals there in that round by Hot Fuzz. I mean, those were some big steals, and he, has, and he enjoys a very nice lead going into round three. 19 to 10. Not insurmountable, but the Renegade is going to have to answer all three of his round three questions just to stay in the game. 19 to 10, that I see right now. Going into round three, let's go. All right, and we're back for round three. Exciting round two. Three points and big steals. For the hot fuzz, 19 to 10, the Renegade, as I said, will have to answer all three of his questions. The rules are as follows. Competitors will pick three numbers between 1 and 16. Those numbers will match random categories. Each of your three questions will be worth two, three, and five points, respectively. Questions, uh, excuse me, there's no stealing, and there's no penalty for missing, other than you could possibly lose. You both have two of your repeats and your one challenge left. Do you understand the rules? Yep. All right. Joe, you are in the lead. Let's have your three numbers from 1 to 16 first, please. 6, 12, and 4. 6, 12, and 4. And Renegade. 1, 2, 3. 1, <laughs> 2, 3 it is. All right. Simple and sweet. Simple, sweet, and just the way we'd like it. Your two-point question... Category number one, 
That is weapons, technology, and magical objects. Uh, the look on his face right now is just priceless. Your question is, and it's a little lengthy, so bear with me while I read it. What is the revolutionary artificial intelligence that tries to wipe out humanity and sends the Terminator back in time to assassinate Sarah Connor in the Terminator? Repeat. Two. All right, that is your second repeat. The question again, what is the revolutionary artificial intelligence that tries to wipe out humanity and sends a Terminator back in time to assassinate Sarah Connor mm. in the Terminator? Five, four, three, two, one. Um, I put T twenty three because kind of. And your winner by a final score of nineteen to ten, and by way of technical knockout, he is Joe the Hot Fuzz Fairly. We were looking for Skynet. Skynet. Skynet, I didn't Skynet. even know technically that Terminator was part of this. Uh... <laughs> no, I did not. Wow, well, what a match. Technology what a match. magical objects can be pretty much anything. Terminator is considered a geek movie by a lot of people. I'm trying to think if I've ever heard a geek question in the Schmodown. I'll nope. have to go back and look later. I've watched every geek tacular movie in the last like three months and there has never been I'll a consult Kevin week. Smith and see what he says. How about that? <laughs> any, final, any thoughts today on this? Oh, wait a minute. No, we're not ready for that yet. I'm sorry. Um, I, okay. I think the elk is ready. Looks like he didn't have to use a generator today. The power is coming in good. The hydro, as they call it in Canada. It is a fine sunny day in uh, southern Ontario. So let's send it up there for some post-match interviews with Andrew the Elk Elk. Take it away, Elk. Yes, it is, Snacks. It is a lovely sunny day here in the Elk's Lodge, a.k.a. the Dollhouse North. That's right. The hardest working man in face-off, he is back, and he's ready to dominate with his stable mates. But enough about me. Let's talk about a man who took down the match in impressive fashion today. We are welcoming him to the Elf Lodge. You can enjoy the craft services. You can enjoy my congratulations, sir, on your victory. Hot fuzz, fairly. How you feeling? Feeling pretty good, Elk. That was pretty good. It's always, Had a heck of a... You can always watch the matches and play along and to go like, oh, I could have got that, but it's a lot mu much more different when the camera's on you under pressure. A fine competitor in the Renegade, but you put up some impressive numbers as you went through eight points in that first round, not too shabby at all. And you continue on your second round, couple of big steals, lots of good answers from you, not giving your opponent much chance to claw his way back. Didn't even have to face a third round question an impressive win under your belt you're going to be moving forward in geektacular you're going to be facing lots of great opponents who are you looking forward to i've been watching the matches they are some tough competitors out there I, i'm happy to, this is just my first match so i'm happy to see what comes next you know i think you know renegade said it before the match he said he doesn't even know who i am well he does now and i think everybody else in this league knows as well not going to blow my trumpet too much though I didn't get any third round questions. I could have got all three of those wrong. We don't know. True. We never know what's going to happen in that third round, but no worries for you on that score today. Joe, hot fuzz, like he's riding into town with all the guns from police lockup, took down the victory today, took down his opponent. My congratulations to you. Best of luck to you moving forward, Mr. Farrelly, in the Geektacular League, no matter who you face, whether it's Renegade again after he takes a couple of wins or anybody else, a Robert Parker perhaps, a Caleb Coho, even... 
David Spaniard might be in your future. We look forward to seeing more of you, Joe. Thank you for joining us in the Elks Lodge, and we'll be right back with the Renegade. Oh, well, well, folks, we are back here in the Elks Lodge with a familiar old story, a man who's spreading the truth, who's telling the world all about the greatness that's coming out of his country. He steps into the ring. He faces off against a worthy opponent. And what happens? Screw him again. Later question, Geektacular, Renegade, thought today was going to go. What are your thoughts right now? Oh, let me just start off with round two. What a low <laughs> Go watch the Two Towers trailer and you can answer the two <laughs> questions you got right at the start. What is this? This favoritism clearly against me, the renegade, Keith Kennedy. Is it because I tell the truth of the greatness of New Zealand? I don't know. And then let me go to round three. The first question, my two-pointer. Terminator... Who told me that Terminator was in a flippin' going to be even a question? What's next? Battlestar Galactica? Are we going to go and watch Spaceballs to get an answer for the Geektacular? Who even knows? Your amazing competitor brought down by the injustice, the untruth, the dishonesty that is endemic in the top of this league. Probably a question asserted by our fake commissioner, David Spaniard. He's always trying to screw people. He's running this league and he's running it. It's just a giant mess the way he's got things going right now. Renegade to you because you're a good man we faced each other in harry potter combat here in the movie trivia face off i know what kind of competitor you are and for once i am actually sorry got today my friend renegade i think moving forward you're gonna do a lot of great things and you will be moving forward your next match will be a different story because it's not over in geektacular with one loss you're gonna come back how are you gonna do it and who are you looking to Look, I don't care who I face next. All I know is that if this injustice continues, I will not be silenced. I will be the loudest, the brashest, the most hateful person to ever walk the movie trivia face off if this injustice continues. If these commissioners and their question writers keep screwing up and just backstabbing me at every turn, the Harry Potter exhibition match they called me 20 minutes beforehand i just got an offer plane what is this every time i'm ready to compete they cause an injustice they pull me in last minute they stab me in the back multiple times i've had it i need some backup i need to crush someone and i need it now well, Mr. Kennedy, have I got a deal for you. I look at you, you're a wise man. You talk about all the filthy Americans and the things that they're doing. You talk about how your country is the greatest in the world. Agree to disagree, respectfully, but you're definitely near the top of that film list. And who knows how to step into that ring and fight against the injustice being brought to you by the commissioners of this league who continue to screw you, who continue to bring you down and hold you, Kennedy. It was about the dollhouse. The dollhouse. They like murdering. They like facing injustice. You know what? You got yourself a deal, Elk. <laughs> well, 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 folks, once again, the numbers grow. The terror spreads. The dollhouse rises up and claims a new member. He's amazing. He's stunning. And he performed great today. If he hadn't been screwed by our fake commissioners on the desk, he might have taken down the victory. Renegade Keith Kennedy, thank you so much for joining me. For all you fans out there, look out for the dollhouse. And if you're a fan of me, the elk, remember to raise those antlers into the air, folks. And get ready because we're coming to take this league down especially that fake commissioner david spaniard we are here with the renegade and right now we're going to take it back to the desk with two men who i do actually respect that's right dj snacks thomas take it away all right we're back thank you for those fantastic interviews andrew the elk kelp who seems to be in full rut now that he's uh decided to go join the dollhouse he's out there recruiting now he's talking all kinds of smack fake commissioners this, that, and the other. The man needs to watch his mouth or he's going to end up in trouble.
you know, commissioner, the real commissioner, not that fake Spaniard guy, the real commissioner is keeping an eye on the dollhouse because they're getting a little bit too big for their britches. I'm going to have to do something about it here in the near future. So, Thomas, you got any final thoughts on today's match? Well, this was a great match. I mean, both competitors had great round ones. Um, Hot Fuzz had a great round two. He smoked that middle earth category. Uh, Renegade just ran, just, you know, he's, he's, he slipped up a bit on uh, Indiana Jones, you know, and that, that's a fairly straightforward category, just four movies. So attention to detail is everything when it comes to those films. Uh, but Hot Fuzz, he played a phenomenal game. He, he, he stole points when he had the opportunity. And just unfortunate that uh, uh, Keith had to lose on a um, Skynet question. You saw post-match, Hot Fuzz was very cordial and nice to everybody. And, you know, Keith did his best Breitbart impression. You know, we will not be silenced. We will tell the truth. Uh, so that's always nice to see in the movie trivia face-off. Um, but, you know, all in all, it was a great match. It was an honor to be up here on the desk with you, the real commissioner, someone I respect to the highest honor. Um, and yeah, this was a great match. Yeah, good drop on the uh, Andrew Breitbart reference, man. <laughs> Skynet is going to take us all eventually, so he should have already known that answer. Anyways, it was a pleasure to be here today. A thank you going out to both of our competitors, the renegade Keith Kennedy and today's winner, Joe, the Hot Fuzz Fairly. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys, for a good match. Uh, thank you to my on the desk today, Thomas the Warhawk Scully. It was a pleasure having you here, sir. Thank you for all your help. Uh, as always, the big shout out to everybody behind the scenes, writing team, questions, graphics, social media, everybody that you don't see. They make these matches as great as they are. We're still learning. We're still growing. We got some growing pains, but we're going to get there. And finally, you, the face-off fanatics. You're the reason we do this. You're the reason we're here. If it wasn't for you, we'd have nobody to show these matches to. Make sure you keep that. Subscribe, like, share, comment down below. Find us on all the social medias, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, the Facebook page, the Facebook group, both. Uh, make sure you check the Movie Trivia Showdown group on Facebook because you might see some information in there related to the Movie Trivia Face-Off as well. Mr. Harloff has been promoting the league as a part of the official Patreon now, so we're going to see where that leads in the future. But as always, be excellent to each other. 